this whole morning, we are going to talk about how we develop among the children reading with comprehension following the 14 domains of literacy. So yesterday, we talked about the characteristics of the learners, starting from the preschool level up to grade three. So that uh, the presentation uh, aims to make us realize and also to be able to uh, relate to the teachers that they should know the characteristics of the children and the milestones at a certain stage. Yung bang ito, kaya na to ng bata. With some uh, moderate challenges in the classroom, they can do this. But ito, talagang hindi niya pa kaya kasi hindi pa abot ng kanyang maturity. So we might be talking above their heads. So yun yung merong not yet, merong kaya na, merong madaling madali na sa kanya. So that uh, the domains of literacy uh, were crafted having these characteristics of learners in mind. So notice that we have these 14 domains and all the domains are supposed to be developed at the kindergarten to grade 3 level in the mother tongue first, then in Filipino, then in English. And notice that some domains already stop after K to 3, meaning that the children have developed them already. And they can, but some domains uh, are being developed until kindergarten to grade 6, some under, until grade 10, some until grade 12. Okay. So yesterday, we talked about the learner characteristics. And when crafting the domains, we had this in mind. We learned yesterday that during the emergent literacy stage, meaning preschool up to beginning grade one, the children gain control of oral language. There's not much problem with oral language in the mother tongue. They come to school equipped already with vocabulary, with expressions in their mother tongue. But we're preparing them for reading in Filipino. We are also preparing them for reading in English. And oral language is supposed to be developed prior to learning to read in that language. We also noted yesterday that when children open a book, they rely on the pictures of the book to get the meaning so that when they look at this book, for example, and they open it to this page, they'll say, may dalawang aso, isang puti, isang brown, patapos merong baka. And to them, that's already the story for this page because they cannot read the text yet. That's why this is called a picture book. The pictures help the children in getting in making sense of the story. They pretend to read. Kunwari, adult na rin sila eh. Nakikita nila si kuyang nagbabasa. Pag binitawan ni kuya ang book, kukunin niya at kunwari, nagbabasa din siya. And that the child really believes that he can read. He recognizes rhymes and he loves rhymes. When the mother sings, Incy wincy spider went up the water spout, naririnig niya yung words. Minsan dapat lang nating pakinggan kasi hindi pa masyadong sharp ang pakikinig nila, especially in English. Instead of singing, guavas are ripe, 
Guavas arrive. Sabi ng bata, Guavas arrive. Guavas arrive. So dapat papakinggan natin at iko-correct. May nagkarol sa bahay namin sa probinsya last December. Sabi niya, in heaven and you renate. Sabi ko, bakit biglang umihi sa langit? <laughs> Yun ang, uh, so, they have to be corrected. But they recognize the sounds. Dapat lang, tayo naman, dapat masyadong malinaw ang pag-sound natin. The children start recognizing letters. My dissertation is on emergent literacy behaviors. And I look at the literacy behaviors of young children. Those who are not yet going to school. Some children can start recognizing letters as early as two and a half years. Ewan ko kung may mga bata, may mga anak kayo na two and a half pa lang, nakaka-recognize na ng letters. Pero ang normal talaga, not all children are already capable of recognizing the letters, is at age, anong sabi ko kahapon? Kailan nakaka-recognize na ng letters? Age 4. Kampanti na tayo na hindi tayo ibabantay bata for uh, ano, uh, making the children do something that they cannot yet do. At age 4, kaya na nila. But even before that age, they already make sense of the environmental prints. And children start writing their own name. Minsan isang letter lang, name na nila yon. I had, uh, uh, I, I observed a child na three years old. Pag nakakita siya ng letter N, pangalan ko yan, Nikki yan, Nikki yan. Pero N lang yon. Okay. So based on these characteristics of emergent learners, we have the following literacy domains. First, we want to develop their positive attitude towards literacy, language, and literature. Positive attitude. Because we have two objectives in uh, reading for the early grades. We want children who can read, and we want children who will read. Nakakabasa at gustong magbasa. So, yun bang batang hindi nakakatulog hanggang hindi binabasahan ng midnight uh, ng bedtime story, di ba? Yun yung mga batang they uh, begin to develop their positive attitude towards language, towards literacy, and towards literature. As a story is read to them, we ask questions to develop their listening comprehension. We said that it's not quite correct to develop comprehension when they are all, uh, just starting to learn to read. Bago pa sila natutong magbasa, dapat napuproseso na nila ang information. They should be able to answer already questions like, sino? Saan nangyari? Kailan? Bakit nangyari yon? Habang nakikinig pa lang ng kwento. We want to develop their oral language. We want to develop their phonological awareness, book and print orientation, alphabet knowledge, at kakabit ng alphabet knowledge is handwriting. So ito yung dapat nadidevelop sa kindergarten. Okay. Kung nakakabasa pa, dagdag na yon. But these are what we call the basic requirements for kindergarten. Attitude towards literacy, language, and literature. Having a sense of being a reader. Developing individual choices of and tastes for texts. To read for various purposes. They read in order to learn and they read for pleasure. I wonder if the mothers here came across their own children uh, being focused on a particular storybook. Na kahit ulit-ulitin, kahit ulit-ulitin, I usually tell my sisters, 
kasi ako lang ang teacher sa family namin. Saka hindi na kayo nagkakamali, basahan lang nyo ng storybook ang anak nyo gabi-gabi. Hindi na kayo magkakamali doon. They come to school, before they come to school, may baon na yung vocabulary. Marunong na yung mag-flip ng pages ng book. Marunong na yung mag-proseso ng plot. Sabi ng sister, ang dali namang sabihin, 50 times ko na atang kinuwento ang Jack and the Beanstalk. Gabi-gabi, yun pa rin ang gusto niyang kwento. Pag sinu-shortcut ko, tinaantok na ko, sabi, mama, hindi pa yan. Ibig sabihin, alam na alam niya na ang kwento. Sabi ka, ikwento mo pa rin, pero dagdagan mo ng isa pa. And even in the kindergarten class, in my reading clinic before, every more summer, every day the child will say, Teacher, the very hungry caterpillar ngayon. Ha? Say ko, hindi, may iba na kong kwento. Oo, pero very hungry caterpillar pa rin. Pagdating sa bahay, yun pa rin pala pinapakwento sa nanay niya. Okay. Dagdagan ng iba. Pero ayong isa kong sister marunong, sab ang kwento niya, Ah, uh, yung mga ants, they are crossing the river. Okay, hintayin natin ha, nagko-cross pa yung ants. <laughs> the next night, mommy, another story. Oh, the ants are still crossing. <laughs> okay, so, but uh, what we want is for them to develop love for reading. And my brother-in-law said, ang gastos naman ang na-develop mo sa mga anak ko. Palaging nagpapabili ng book na babasahin sa ka, pero hindi ka nagpapatutor because they know. Okay. They develop positive attitude towards language, literacy, and literature by listening to stories read to them by the parents or the teachers. And ideally, ideally because Minsan wala tayo nito sa public schools. Having a print-rich environment. How nice if we have a small reading corner in the classroom and we have storybooks. Sa UPIS, wala din kaming maraming libro, but we ask the parents to lend. So every month, may parents na nagle-lend ng storybook na nakalagay sa aming reading corner. It Peace, uh, uh, the, the benefits are uh, big. If the children browse books, if the children try to make sense of the picture book that they are flipping. So, if only the teachers will have a storybook and every morning we'll ask the children to sit down and he or she opens a storybook. Uh, for the children, it's a very relaxing moment. But notice that as they listen to a story, ang dami-dami nilang napupulot. Okay. During story reading, look what the children are thinking. I wish I can read that book. I want to read that story. So, nagbabasa pa lang teacher, sana nakakabasa na ako. And we're already developing that positive attitude towards reading. Look how relaxing it is. Parang sabi ng pamangkin ko, sabi mo mama, mahirap sa kinder. Hindi naman eh, nauupo lang kami at nakikinig sa kwento. So hindi nga mahirap sa kinder. Uh, as opposed to, I, I entered a class where at the start of class, the teacher would say, copy what I wrote on the two blackboards. Yung isang blackboard, lahat ng capital B. Yung isa, lahat small B. Say ko, kung ako ang kindergarten child, hindi na ako papasok bukas. <laughs> Di ba? Hindi mo lang pinakanta, hindi mo lang pinatula. Pinakopya ng big letter B and small letter B. Dalawang blackboards. Kaya ang bata, tingnan mo ang mga kamay. Nasa ng teacher? Nakikipagkwentuhan doon sa corridors. Babantay bata ko yung teacher na yun. Okay. The ability to read is a big predictor of success in school. They don't listen or they don't meet those difficult words individually. But they meet it during story reading. And as a grade one teacher, I can say for sure, who among the children are read to at home? 
because they come to school equipped with good vocabulary. One grade one pupil, I was trying to tone down some words and I said, you know, in some countries, it gets so cold during several months of the year. And the child said, I know because there's winter there. And I said, during those cold months, some animals sleep for a long time. I know, they hibernate. Grade one bato. <laughs> he is red too at home. Then as we read a story to them, we develop their listening comprehension. Listening comprehension is a complex and active process in which vocabulary knowledge is crucial. That's why we unlock difficult words prior to reading a story to them. Vocabulary knowledge is a crucial component and which requires an intentional and thoughtful interaction between the listener and the text. As we read a story to the children, they are interacting with the text. Ay, parang yung aso namin yan. Ay, nag din pala ang mga aso. Parang kami ng kapatid ko. So as you read to them, they interact with the text. So we share a story. Shared reading. Where the text is very predictable. The text is very rhythmic and the text is very repetitive so that before you know it, the children are reciting some lines with you. We also do story reading or what we call a read aloud. We do guided reading and I would say we do storytelling. Kung walang libro, you do storytelling. And my professor corrected me. Kahit may mga libro, sometimes uh, the children need storytelling because the book, even if it's a very good book, uh, acts as a barrier between you and the children. Kasi tumitingin ka sa libro, tumitingin ka sa bata. But if you're doing story reading, storytelling, walang barrier. Nakatingin ka mismo sa mga bata abang nagkukwento ka. And if, there is a, if the children knit their eyebrow, you know that you have said something that they don't understand. And you can change the word. Okay. Kung may time, mag storytelling tayo mamaya. Shared reading, as I said, the text is predictable. It has repetitive lines and it is rhythmic. So for example, this book, Uulan Ba? Basahin nga natin. Isang araw, lumabas si Manok. Tak, tak, patak, uulan yata, sabi ni Manok. Siya ay tumakbo sa munting kubo at doon sumuko. Lumabas si Pagong. Tak, tak, patak. Lumabas si Pusa. Sige, sabihin nga natin. Sabi ni Pusa, siya ay tumakbo sa munting. Lumabas si Aso. At tingnan nyo, napaka-repetitive ng text. It's also the story, down came the rain. Peter, Potter, Peter, Potter, down came the rain. It fell on cat, it fell on kittens, it fell on cat, on kittens and me. Second page, Peter, Potter, Peter, Potter, down came the rain. It fell on hen, it fell on chicks, it fell on hen and chicks and me. And my pupil said, ay paulit-ulit lang teacher, kami na ang babasa ng Peter Potter. So it became a shared reading. They read, Peter Potter, Peter Potter, down came the rain. And I read, it read, oh, it fell on duck, it fell on ducklings, it fell on duck, on ducklings and me. And again, they said, Peter Potter, Peter Potter. So masaya ang klase, feeling nila nagbabasa talaga sila. So shared reading. Story reading. Oh, nandiyan si Mayor Ro, ano? Uh, 
story reading with the parents. You invite them in the classroom and they read to children. Books like The Carrot Seed, Tic Tac Talk, or Who Took the Farmer's Hat. Maliit na siya, hindi na repetitive ang lines. So you read it to them directly. Guided reading. You now read with the child. You listen to the child read a book. And you make corrections on certain parts uh, where the child hesitates to read. Why read stories? Aside from developing positive attitude towards language, literacy, and literature, Story reading improves the pupil's attention span. Every day they sit down for 15 to 20 minutes to listen to you read. Nahalata mo, nagi improve, humahaba ang kanilang attention span. And even the boy who is an ADHD in class, pag naglirid ka ng story, he is like an angel in front. Nakikinig siya sa kwento. It develops or improves their listening comprehension. They are introduced to oral language, vocabulary, and concept. As the teacher reads the story, the carrot seed, and reads every day, the little boy pulled up the weeds around the seed and sprinkled the ground with water. Nakikita nila, ay may sprinkler. I my weeds. They are exposed to book handling behaviors. And after listening to a story, they can draw something about the story. They can write down uh, their ideas or they compose. Look at those children composing uh, from, the from the story the most beautiful house in the forest, and the story, the king's birthday gift. Every time that I read a story to the children, there is a composing activity, and we're going to talk about it later. Stories may be used for introducing a grammar lesson. Uh, for example, after reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar, I use this is a and this is an as my grammar lesson. I introduce this is an apple, this is an orange, this is a pear, this is a strawberry. So yung kwento, springboard for introducing a grammatical structure. Likewise, stories are springboard for values development. In the early grades, you cannot preach during, ano yung values ngayon, anong tawag? Uh, sa pagpapaka, edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. And it would be very effective if a certain concept in edukasyon sa pagpapakatao uh, would use the story as a springboard. Being a good brother or sister, being friendly, knowing how to share, being patient, being helpful, Lahat yun, mayroong po pwedeng springboard na story. Third domain is oral language, which refers to one's knowledge and use of the structure, the meanings, and the uses of the language. Please take note that literacy development depends on the development of oral language in the language of literacy. One reason why we fail or why our teachers fail in developing reading comprehension among the children is we demand that they read with comprehension, uh, but we don't equip them with oral language in the language of literacy. Bigla nating papabasahin ng English story. Eh, wala naman silang kamuwang-muwang doon sa mga sinasabi sa kwento. So they can just decode the words, but they don't understand what they read. And reading comprehension is a big problem now in our schools, which I think the early grades teacher can correct 
by offering oral language so that every word that the children read, they understand. Because, will you read the second uh, bullet? One. Kapag hindi niya naiintindihan, he can just decode the words without understanding them. And notice the big, the tall order for our children. They should be literate in L1. Later, they should be literate in L2. And then they should be literate in L3. A tall order for the children. The, the by grade three, they should be reading with understanding in their mother tongue, in Filipino, and in English. And oral language development is a big factor towards the development of these three literacies. How do we develop oral language? Teachers would ask me, Mom, nasa program po oral language lang sa Filipino. Oral language lang daw po sa English. Paano po ituturo ang oral language? Story reading activities would be one big factor. They listen to the words in the story. Poems, rhymes, jingles, finger plays. And my dear administrators, please see to it that your teachers have a collection of poems, jingles, uh, finger plays, Songs for the early graders. Noon may collection tayo niyan, di ba? Ano yung requirement sa isang course? A collection of all of these. And see to it that the teacher asks them to recite poems. Nung nasa laboratory school ako, the supervisor said, Feli, every day, isang row ng bata, a uh, gagawin mong leader para magparecite ng poem. So, uh, kung pito yung nasa rong yan, pitong bata ang magsasabing, classmates, please stand. Let's recite. I have something in my pocket. And the next na naman, classmates, please stand. Let's recite. Pampadulas yan ng dila ng mga bata. When they recite and recite, they become uh, more uh, uh, more capable of uh, reciting or speaking in a particular language. Dramatization. Yesterday we said that children at age five would love to dramatize. They dramatize songs. They dramatize the poems that are taught to them. Kaya nga may action song. Let them do it. Lots of talking activities in the classroom. Show and tell. Uh, I have something to show. It is red. It is round. It can bounce. O may tatlo na uh, sa show and tell. Or I spy. News sharing. Ang news naman nila yung good morning classmates. I have some news to share. We have a new kitten. Minsan tat, ah, no. teacher, teacher, Anong, anong English ng nanganak ang pusa namin? Eh, yun. News na yun. Or, my baby brother is sick. News yun sa kanila. At least, nakapunta sa unahan at nakasabi ng isang sentence. Play activities. Okay, so, uh, when you supervise the teachers in the early grades, uh, you try to look for these things. During your sharing period, nagpakanta ka ba? During the sharing period, nagparecite ba ng poems? Let me see your uh, uh, compilation of copies of poems and songs. Ngayon, marami ng tape may nada-download na sa YouTube. So, it's not anymore as difficult as during the days of our teachers.